In this lesson, I'm going to talk about how we can control or change the shape of the particles over the span of their life. So in the previous lesson, I talked about how we can add some forces to move the particles around and change their movement behavior over their life. But I left the part out where we wanted to change, for example, the size and the color of these particles, because right now they are just popping into the scene and they are doing their movement and then suddenly after their lifetime ends they actually pop out so in order to make this to look more interesting we need to control not only the color of the particles over the life for some cases but we also want to make sure that we can control how the particles are popping in and popping out so they don't suddenly just show up and then disappear so in order to do that we are going to use two new modules one of the modules we actually learned about which is the color module but we are going to add it in the particle update and the other one is the scale of the particles and we are going to add that in the particle update as well because keep in mind we are doing all of these in the span of the particles lives I'm going to start with the simpler one which is adding a color node so I'm going to add a color module and immediately you will see that it's it's going to change the color of the particles to this default white value regardless of what we originally had here even if we had like initialized particles with some colors here this color node this color module is going to overwrite that because it immediately comes in play when the particles are born just like before we can change this to any color that we like and it's time to be able to say we want to have these particles to start with a color and then end with another color or even maybe fade out using their alpha channel or transparency. I'm going to have one complete lesson talking about the data inputs here, but for now we are going to just simply change this color input to something that allows us to control the colors over the span of the lifetime of the particles. So in order to change this input, these are called parameter inputs or attribute inputs. In order to change this type to a range, I'm going to click on this little drop down list or triangle here and I'm going to type in the name of the input that I know what it's called it's actually found in the dynamic input and the first one is color from curve I'm going to use that one so I'm going to type in curve so color from curve shows up and you can see that it changed the data input type and it's giving me this curve here that allows me to actually pick couple colors over the span of the lifetime of the particle so if you look at this this curve here I'm going to expand it so what we see here is that we are going from left to right and this is the lifetime of the particles and you can see here it says the curve index is set to normalized age by default I'm, I'm going to spend more time on this term here normalized age and what it means but for now let's assume that the particles are born here and they grow up and then they reach their maximum lifetime and they actually die here and during this time they are either changing their color or changing their transparency and they we will see the results here as well so by default you can see that we are starting from a color white all the way to the right side which is still a white color and on the bottom of this curve here you will see that we are also having two other color inputs here these are representing the transparency of the particles so you can see it goes from 100 percent transparent all the way to zero opacity which means it's going to be transparent this solves some of the issues that i was talking about you can see that now the particles are not just dying immediately they're not disappearing immediately they are actually fading out which is more interesting so how can we change these of course we can double click on any of these and we can change the colors i'm going to delete these two color inputs here so we only focus on the color for now and then i'm going to add them later so I'm just selecting them and hitting delete on my keyboard. So now my particles are going to, it seems that I need to have one transparency input here. So I'm going to just double click here to bring that back in. And I'm going to delete these to make it simpler. So now you can see the particles are starting from a red color. And as they grow, they become whiter and whiter. It's a little bit hard to see them. I'm going to do some modifications on my emitter as well as the number of particles so we can easily see the results there. So I'm going to increase the radius of my emitter to something higher. All right, so you can see the colors now. I'm going to change the spawn rate to something lower than that. So 500 maybe. So we can focus more on the change of the properties of the particles over their life. 
I'm going to add some more colors here to make it a little bit more visually interesting or at least understand that we are seeing the change of the colors. They are born with a red color, they get to yellow color in their mid-age, and then when they get closer to the time they, they are supposed to die, they, they become whiter and whiter. And of course, I can add another opacity input here and I double click on it and I will type in zero so before they die they actually fade out again just to make sure that they are not suddenly disappearing so I'm going to bring this 100% opacity input closer to the time that they are supposed to die so we see more of them during that time okay it seems that we can make this transition to be a little bit more gradual here we go I think I'm happy with the result. I'm going to do some modification here so we see more yellow color and maybe even fading out a little bit more slower. Cool. Very well. I'm going to save. So there is one thing that I want to mention here, which is the major part of controlling particles over their lifetime which relates to the fact that when we are generating the particles not all of them are having the same life right so if i go back to my initialized particle if you see here i'm having a random value for the lifetime of the particle so right now each one of these particles might have a life of something between 0.1 second or three seconds so it means that when i'm defining the properties or the life of the particles we need to somehow understand what's the lifetime of each one of these particles individually because right now they are random so what does this curve mean here it starts from zero if you notice here and it goes all the way to one but my particles might have a lifetime of 0.1 second 0.5 second one second three seconds two seconds so how does this curve allow me to do the same thing for each one of them regardless of their lifetime that's where this normalized age comes in play. So this normalized age means that regardless of the value of the lifetime of each one of these particles, they are always going to have a normalized age that starts from zero all the way to a value of one all the time, regardless of the input. Just to prove that, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change these values to be a fixed value of two seconds. So there is no randomness for these particles anymore. You can see they are still getting red yellow all the way to transparent white if i make a very dramatic range for this lifetime so anything between 0.1 second to 10 seconds still the particles are behaving the same way they start with the color red when they get into the, their middle age they become yellow and as they get closer to their final value in their age they become whiter and more transparent that's only again because my input here for my color is normalized age so to make it more easy to understand, I have prepared a setup here. I'm going to pause this. So in this setup, I'm simulating, I'm just visually creating this scene for you so you can understand what, what I'm talking about when I'm referring to the normalized age. So currently, let's assume that each one of these lines are representing only one particle. And as we get to the right, I'm just showing how the particles are changing their colors as well as changing their size over their life. So each one of these lines are only representing one particle. And traveling from left to right, we are actually traveling over time. So right now, in this setup, I'm having seven particles. For each one of them, I'm having a lifetime of exactly one second. So they all start from yellow color, get blue, and get red, over a span of one second. As soon as I increase the randomness on the life of the particles, something like this, so currently my minimum life is one second, my maximum life is three seconds, and it's random. However, still each one of these are having their change of colors over their life, which is identical to the rest of them, regardless of their lifetime. So let's just make it more dramatic. I'm going to make the life minimum to 0.1 second and maximum value of four seconds. And still you can see each one of them are having the same behavior. So this is called changing the properties over the normalized age. If I want to show the normalized age here, currently you can see that although these particles are having different lifetimes, all the time their normalized age in the middle of their life is 50% or 0.5. 
if I change the middle blue color or move it around, you're going to see that when their normalized age is 10% or 0.1, it doesn't matter what's their lifetime. It only matters when they reach their 10% of their lifetime, they become blue or they become, let's say, a green color. So 10% for this one is here, 10% for this one is here, 10% for this long one is somewhere around here. So for this one, 10% means 0.2 second, for this one means 0.09 second, for this one means 0.3 seconds, and so on. Again, normalized age, if it's 0.5 or 50%, for this one is 1 second, for this one is 0.45 second, I'm just dividing these values by 2. For this one is around 1.7 seconds, and so on. So regardless of their lifetime, they're always going to have the same behavior over their life. This is called normalized age. And the reason why we call them normalized age is that we divide these values by their maximum value. So this it's always a value of one. So regardless of their lifetime, their normalized age is always going to go from zero to one. That's the same value that we had here. Normalized age from zero to a value of one, regardless of the lifetime of the particles. And as a guide here, you can see it's called normalized age. It's exactly the same thing that I was talking about. That's the major thing that you need to learn about when you're dealing with controlling the behavior of the particles or controlling the shape of the particles over their life. You always need to have some randomness. That's the first thing that you need to do. Always give some randomness to any attribute that you can, especially the lifetime, because the rest of behaviors that are going to be over the span of their life is going to be based off of that normalized age, which refers to the age of the particles or the lifetime of the particles. So if you start with a random value for the lifetime, the result of the rest of the modules is going to be also random because it's all based on the normalized age. Let's decrease the range of this randomness for the lifetime to something more manageable. Very well, I'm going to go back to my color and I'm going to do some adjustments here. Keep in mind that our range starts from 0 to 1. And you can always double click on any of these and change their values. And I guess I'm happy. The second item that I always control when I'm dealing with particles is their size. I'm going to add another module called scale sprite size. We do have a scale mesh size. Scale mesh size is where we are rendering them as mesh, but currently we are rendering these particles as sprites. So I'm going to choose scale sprite size. Okay. Similar to what we did with the color, we need to add a curve here so we can control them over their lifetime. So I'm going to add a curve vector 2d from a curve this is the part that gets a little bit tricky i will talk about this in the next lesson how we can mix and match some data inputs together to make the process a little bit easier for now i'm going to just convert the scale factor to a vector 2d from a curve which means that it's going to give me a curve that helps me to control a vector 2d all through that curve so currently you can see that the particles are having their full scale of one at normalized age of zero and in the normalized age of one normalized age of one their value is zero which means that they are scaling down to a point to a small point so that's cool i'm going to add a couple more keyframes here on this curve to control them so i don't want them to start showing up at a full scale and then drop their scale i want to actually start with a scale of zero go all the way up get to their full scale stay for a while and then come down to a scale of zero. So I'm going to right click on these curves. In fact, we are having two curves on top of each other identically. So I'm going to move one of them around so I can see the other one. And I'm going to move this down here. So again, they start with a scale of zero. See that? And I can make it more precise by typing values here. So at time zero, normalized age of zero i want them to have a value of zero at normalized age of 0.2 for example or 20 percent of their lifetime i want them to be full scale of one and even maybe hold that value for a while so i'm going to add two more keyframes here select them maybe at a value of 0.6 or 60 percent of their age i want them to still hold that maximum value of one Keep in mind that this is a scale factor 
so a scale factor of one means that keep your current size whatever it is even if it's random size keep that scale with you and then after normalized age of 0.6 they start dying and getting smaller and smaller let's see the result i'm going to turn off the color for a while so we can see what is happening if you notice here the particles are not popping in anymore they are growing up even if it's a little bit fast i can even make it faster but still it will help me to avoid having distracting particles just popping into my scene so it's always recommended and i would say always all the time do this scale your particles up scale your particles down so a combination of scaling the particles and changing their opacity together makes your particles to look more natural and it's not going to be distracting anymore so i'm going to turn on the color here now very well and now that we have these two scale sprite size and the color over their lifetime i'm going to increase the spawn rate to make it more interesting keep in mind that this scale module is only scaling the particles regardless of their initial size so if i want i can make this randomness on the size of the particles to be even more random I'm going to increase the range of their size to something even more dramatic so let's have a size something between 0.2 and 15. all sort of particles they are all scaling up and scaling down and their opacity is turning down so things are working nicely i'm going to change the size of the emitter to something higher spawn rate to 1500 and the sphere location to 50. all right so this is the preview i'm going to save this i guess i need to save the niagara system as well because i'm using that emitter in there and it's supposed to update my scene as well so my level is now having those particles growing up changing their scale all the way up and then fading out so things are looking nice Cool. so i'm gonna stop here in the next lesson i will talk about how we can have multiple data inputs here because right now for example for the scale if you noticed here i know i'm always going to scale up the particles uniformly so i do not want to deal with x and y curves but rather i want to have just one curve that deals with both axes at the same time and i want to control them at the same time so we are going to learn how we can make a hierarchy on these inputs on these data inputs to make that manipulation to be much easier so for now i'm going to stop here and in the next lesson i'm going to talk about how we can create hierarchy on the data inputs see you in the next lesson